All right. Apparently, I am live. So, we are going to begin. First thing I did was just uh, some lead belcher base spray. Spray the legs built. Uh, spread the upper carapace covers with wraith bone and took some wood glue, put a bunch of clumps of it down there, took some fresh step kitty litter and mixed it up, kind of spread it out a little bit. And this guy will sit just in there. And then we'll have our, we'll be able to do our base and everything else. So uh, right now, the first thing we're going to do is grab our handy dandy wet palette here. Now, something that you should never do is, they say, <laughs> is use uh, metallic paints in there in your wet palette because it will cause the little flakes to get into your sponge and you'll never get it out. It'll basically ruin your stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some, some gun metal out. We're gonna work on getting some base, base coat down for our upper pieces here. These are really fun to paint too. Okay. I like to leave a little piece on there for a while so I can paint it and hold it without rubbing off all of the uh, the primer. The color scheme I'm going to go for is off of Underdog's 30K Death Guard. He uses a really awesome green color uh, scheme. Kind of like a Dusk Warriors uh, color, if you will. Oh, hey, Anton, what's going on over there, buddy? You're over in France, right? I think, yeah, you're over in France, aren't you? But, uh, yeah, his, uh, his color scheme is pretty legendary. Really nice. So... I'm going to go with silver trim on all the bigger pieces. Uh, I'll take this wraith bone as my base and we'll figure out a way to shade that down into his cream color or close to it as I can get. And then I'll start put house markings on here. And I haven't really got to the part with uh, figuring out how to do transfers very well. I don't have a good track record with putting varnish on my models. I sprayed a uh, tech marine I did as a present for a buddy of mine. And when I did, apparently I didn't shake it correctly. I just didn't do something right. thought I did because, you know, hey, I shook the hell out of this thing. But what ended up happening was this guy... Got a really crazy dull coat on him. And it kind of, if you look at the back here, you can see where that all got really super dull. It took a lot of the contrasting colors out and put this weird, almost powdery film like the guy walked through a, a cloud of flour <laughs> on his way to combat. I figure I could do some touch ups and brighten it back up, but. Not happy with that. So I'll figure that out as we go. But when you see a lot of videos where people are like, yeah, don't worry about messing up. Yeah, that's that's all good. That's great. But here's the thing, man. You got to practice doing it right. If you're just sloppy with it and you're just throwing paint on there, you know, you're going to get it done. It's going to work. But 
you got to go back through and cover things up and do touch ups. And that causes uh, weird effects that aren't good. Like you'll get a weird shadowing effect where your tones will be just slightly off around certain details. And because those details are there, it's going to cause the people to draw their eye to those mistakes even easier because they'll be trying to focus on that detail. But that mistake will pop out. If you're like me, every time you look at that piece, you're going to see that mistake. So, yeah, it's cool to, to do your best and all and don't to don't stress it. Don't freak out about it. But, you know, don't ever sit there thinking it's OK to be mediocre because, you know, it's just not. But get me wrong, I'm I'm not sponsored by Seed Studios or anything, and I'm not that I'm not good enough to win a Golden Demon, but I'm good enough that I'm happy with what's coming out of uh, my paint table here, and that's what matters. My buddy John keeps trying to tell me to uh, compete for a Golden Demon, but I'm not on that level, not even close to it. I can do some good basic colors and shading and a few details, but my hands shake too much, man. Like, you'll notice not one of my models has dots in the eyeballs. You know, not one of my models has, no, I take that back, two of my models have different shade tones inside the eye lenses of their Space Marine helmets. And it's just my hands shake too much for that. Doesn't work for me. And work on getting some of this this lead belcher in. I have to come up with uh, a good secondary color for my house livery. If I'm going to go with that cream color from underdog stuff, I want something that's going to go with it, but I don't want to look at a color wheel and pick anything directly across from it. The whole purpose is to have a have a stark contrast in it so it doesn't match, so it stands out against itself. That way, if you have uh, details, like I learned this lesson on my Chaos Knight Desecrator because I painted it black uh, and maroon to match my Black Legion, my Abaddon's Black Legion. So the, the details are are really, really scarce unless you're actually sitting there looking at it because it all kind of blends in together. So if you have like this, where you have one shoulder pad this color and then the other shoulder pad the same color as your, as your main carapace, then you can focus on the details in the two different shoulder pads individually. It's weird, but it works. Yeah. I started out with... Uh, my ultramarines, I wanted to do a side tight and a side night, but I can't get the colors right. I've tried and tried and tried, and I just cannot get uh, the way that the they fade the red and the blue into the yellow. I can't get that to work. So I'm going to go ahead and let that marinate for probably a couple weeks and months. Continue practicing that technique on the side on these pieces of sprues that I leave off just so I could try to figure it out. I'm sure there's a tutorial video somewhere that'll show me exactly how to do it, but, you know, then I'm not painting my knights. I'm painting somebody else's knights in my army, and that's not cool, you know. Got to have your individuality. All right. It's, uh, it's one time. <laughs> it's one time in army camp. I'll tell you a story. I was in uh, Germany, and I was getting ready to deploy to uh, Kosovo. My wife was like, you need something to do to keep you busy while you're there because, you know, You'll go stir crazy. I had a uh, a desk job at the time, so really wasn't doing a lot of that cool guy stuff where you're running around and hanging out in the in the woods. But uh, 
she bought me a bunch of Warhammer models. I'd never painted any before. We were in a toy store, and I was just, like, looking at models, and I saw some. I was like, yeah, let's grab those. So I grabbed, I remember I grabbed a Predator tank, a Land Raider tank, uh, a couple boxes of Marines. I think at the time, the the I didn't understand that there was, you know, different factions of Marines. I just thought they were all Space Marines, and, you know, you just had, like, this unit was this color, and that unit was that color. So I bought uh, salamanders, I bought some blood angels, I had a really good mix of everything and absolutely nothing that could legally be <laughs> fielded on the table. So uh, took them down to Kosovo with me and I tried painting there, but that was back before the invent of, you know, the YouTuber program where everybody could just do their own thing and you could find a video on how to do pretty much anything on YouTube now, but back then wasn't the case. So I really didn't enjoy it. I painted my first Space Marine this weird color of uh, bluish white. And then I took the black paint and I tried to, to trace the lines with the brush with black paint because I didn't know that you do a wash on there to get those details to come out. And like I said, I just... Grabbed a bunch of models, grabbed a bunch of paints, a couple brushes, and off to Kosovo I went. So I got back and uh, I sold it all. I had probably two boxes, three boxes of Space Marines, two or three tanks, uh, maybe five or six different paint pots, and then two brushes, three brushes. I sold it all to a guy for a hundred bucks over in uh, Cotterbach. Just random dude. I was like, hey, I need to sell some Warhammer stuff. And he's like, I do it. So I kind of wish I would have kept them because, you know, you never know. Back then I was just like buying stuff right before I left. I really didn't know what I was doing. I might have had some really cool special characters. And it's been so long, I don't really remember what they were, but I do know that I had like six from Blister Packs. Yeah, did the camera code did, did the camera come out right, Chris? Did I get rid of all the uh, stuff you were talking about with the the display? It took a while. I had to look at like four different videos because apparently nobody uses this camera. They use the version up from it, so. Maybe someday when I'm a sponsored famous guy, Sony will say, hey, we need to give that dude a camera so he'll use our stuff. How's the sound coming through? Everything good with that? I need to get my OBS studio certification done so I can do my intro video. My buddy Chris over there in Scotland wrote me a really cool theme song sitting around one day. He's like, hey, I got a mandolin, a, a banjo, and a harmonica. You need a theme song. <laughs> he whipped me out a theme song pretty awesome. I'm kind of excited. I've been running around getting uh, stock footage so I can try to try to build a, a little quick 20 second intro video for this. Because Man, I really appreciate the effort you put into that, Chris. Thank you, man. It's awesome of you, brother. But yeah, most of this will be covered so you don't have to paint all the inside. A lot of people do that. I watched a video from... Uh, uh, who's those guys? One Mind Syndicate this morning. Guy was working on his uh, Custodes biker dude, the hover bike. He was talking about painting parts of it before you put it on. And this part, it's easier to paint in that part. And, you know, I'm totally with the dude. I see the guys like uh, uh, Brush and Bolt Gun and those dudes. And they, they put the whole model together or, uh, and then they paint it. I just can't get into those little fine detail spots because my hand shakes. So it's like, eh. 
I find it easier to do what uh, those guys do. You paint the parts that you that you have to, or at least do the base coats on the parts that you have to, so you don't end up with a big mottled mess and globs here and there. And that's where you get into that issue that I had with uh, covering up and changing the tone. Touching up is easy, but if you've shaded something, you may as well start that whole section over and kind of try to even it out. Because if you go trying to touch that up, you're going to mess up your shade and you're never going to get it back because little bitty parts will be darker or lighter than the other. And then when you look at it after everything dries, you'll see a very stark contrast in it. But at least I do. I don't know if I put enough paint on my brush or, you know, it's hard watching uh, other people paint and doing their tutorials and then figuring out, you know, I, I put that wash on there, but I don't have a pool like that. And he says that you got to keep it from pooling, but it's all up close. So it's hard to see the, the amount they're doing. So it's easier just to re-guess it. Do it all on your own. This guy off to the side. And uh, got this guy right here. Get him going. Mm -hmm. If you can see, I still got this guy sitting over here in the background. Uh, I don't, I don't fully paint all my models. Just sit here and paint them, because I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm weird. I like to paint when the mood hits me, and when the mood leaves, I stop. I just don't. I don't want to make it feel like it's a chore or it's a job because then I just won't enjoy looking forward to doing it. I'll be like, man, I got to go finish this and I got to go finish that. That's why I won't do uh, commissions. One guy asked me if I would paint his army. I'm like, nah, because it, by the time I got around to actually finishing it, you know, you'd be trying, you'd be giving it to your grandson, you know. Like I've got a Thunderfire cannon, my first experience with resin models and it freaked me out kind of because i was like man what the hell is all this stuff you got to clip it and i didn't i, I might have screwed up some of the details because i wasn't 100 percent sure what i was supposed to clip off and what i wasn't so that buddy that i painted the tech marine for it was his thunderfire cannon that i feel bad about i need to finish that but I absolutely hate working with resin models. That's why I haven't started my slime arba. Uh, have a buddy that wanted to 3D print me one. And I tried to tell him, I'm like, when you 3D print them, they're 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 messy. They don't work. You know, and he's like, Oh, you could file them and sand them. It's like, yeah. You may as well ask me if I want to go ahead, get some clay, do a quick sculpt, cast my own, and then paint it. It's like, man, it's, e it's easier just to let the guys that do it, that have the the copyright on it, to go ahead and make one out of plastic, and then I can prime it and paint it and build it. It's a much easier. Less hassle. My, I guess my creativity only goes so far, right? <laughs> Funny. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the base shed. I was thinking some type of... Uh, multiple green shading and hues and just kind of make it a weird bubbling swamp of filth a little bunch of nurgle rot on there and give it a nice snotty look to it that fresh step cat letter bubbles up real nice too so i was thinking about uh trying to paint all of those things into eyeballs or maybe eggs and put a bunch of nurglings down there tending to them kind of give it a nice little diorama feel but i think that's way more effort that I want to go through for a base. I really don't do bases in terrain. I tried it, but it just wasn't my thing. Yeah, you know, uh, Soda was telling me about that. He's printing me actually uh, making me a Space Marine helmet. Uh, he's almost done with it, but he was saying, yeah, it comes in pieces. You'll have to use a little acetone and you can smooth it out and he said that uh, 
you basically you just heat it up a little bit and you can uh, what do you call it melt weld i guess melt weld the the layers together but i got a set of noise canceling headphones i'm going to put in the ear pockets uh i've got a uh an old m40 mask left over from my army days that somehow ended up in my bags so i got an extra pro mask i'm going to take all the pieces of that out and put them all up into the front so it's you know it's got that effect and then i will put a voice modulators from like a cheap darth vader or kylo ren helmet so it i can get that effect and for the lenses i've actually been looking at these glasses on amazon and they they're, they're like blue blockers but they're uh red and they actually do a digital display on the lens i could take the the lenses off and keep the stems on there all wired together still just kind of you know, snap them apart and move them easily and i can put those anywhere in the helmet and use the stems as like a brace or something so they could still sit there and house all the electronic components for it kind of excited about trying it to be honest with you want to I want to do that. Walk into my local games workshop place wearing a Space Marine helmet, call the guy a heretic and, heretic and demand that he... Uh... No, nah, wait a minute. I'm a, I'm a Death Guard guy. Hmm. Yeah, that ain't going to be good. I'm going to have to figure out some other way to be a, be a smart ass about that. But I will figure it out. Hmm. Yeah. You know what, Chris? I need to move the camera and go above because I see my arm is in the way. And it's hard to keep looking at the camera to, or the computer to try to figure out where stuff is and move. So, oh, well. This whole thing is kind of a work in progress, right? Figure it out as we go along. There we go. Got the sh two shoulder boards based. I use uh, gunmetal on those, I think. Yeah. Use gunmetal on those. It's close to lead belcher. No, I don't. Uh, I do not have a mount. I got a little tripod. I mean, I'm sure I can figure out a way to stick it up here somewhere. Maybe put it up, up here behind me up there so it looks down from where the window is but shout our brushes let's get something and what color are we going to go with what do you say it's really we'll do that with uh the puddles where he'll be standing here and then we'll work out from there and get a little bit darker and uh, see what we can blend mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Throw the, a couple of handfuls of sand on this yesterday too just to kind of roughen it up where he'll be standing what I do not want to do is do this with all this stuff once I start painting that guy's leg. Because, like I said, I'm really touchy about going back through and doing uh, patchwork touch-ups on, on the models. That's probably the last time I'll need to dip that in the bottle because the sear gray primer that's on this it's looking like it's getting a little saw delicious 
Yeah. I got a solution though. Look at this. Put a couple drops here. Drop there. There we go. Watch that dropper out. And finish up this real quick. This is the part where it's okay to be messy, yeah? So, get this down. Let that start to dry out. And I can already tell this is going to be okay. This is how this will work. So, what we'll do is, for the green swampy snot base, Yeah, there's a there's a guy over at uh, oh man. he's a British guy. He's called the Terrain Tutor. Uh, I saw him use that same uh, static thing. You you sprinkle it on and you uh, he used a magnet, I think, and had it all stand up. And he actually showed that you could you could do growing wheat that way. But it was the same principle, I think. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit above my skill level, buddy. <laughs> I wish I could pull that off, but, you know, that, that requires a dedication to the hobby and a, a bunch of money that my wife would really not be happy I spend. I, I spend enough as it is. All right, so we got our base started. Uh, when this dries out, what we'll do is we'll darken it. And we'll, I'll get some, let's see. We could take some warp stone glow and some moot green. These really super bright colors like this. And these technical colors, they give a nice shade or a nice shine effect. They iridescent effect when you mix them with the paints. And what we'll do is I'll just do some, some circles coming out, some wavy lines like waves. And then we'll blend those, wet blend them with some more shade, and it'll just look like the nastiness spewing out and changing colors as it goes out. Really nice effect. So, got to get this guy done and do all of these, these pieces. So, for those, I'm actually going to use Lead Belcher. That would be a different tone. You can see here the legs were sprayed with lead belcher, and this is a much brighter tone. When you start throwing uh, highlights and shades on there, you could definitely tell where the tones change and darken and light. So this guy, we're going to use some lead belcher, and we'll get all of the, the pipes on the front of them done start getting this carapace going when I go around and do the uh, front piece on this the, the heck. when I do the front armor piece that goes across here it's got little teeth and stuff coming down that'll be in that silver color and you'll be able to definitely see the difference there so. You can go with multiple different, uh, uh, what's the guy do, uh, contrast colors. You could go with contrast colors on these, and I'm going to. I'm going to use quite a few of the contrast colors. Uh, I don't like the way some of the, uh, the flesh colors look. It seems to me like they're, they're, they're all like the same. Like, I can't really see a good difference between Gilliman and Fire Stealer Flesh or uh, Cadian Flesh Tone and uh, what's the Eldar Flesh Tone, not the Witch Skin, but the... Anyway, it's, it's, it's hard to, like, really see a distinction in those. So I prefer just to go with the Corax White Base Coat. 
and then seraphim sepia to shade it for the skin. That's what I like to do on, on models that are big like this if I'm going to do shading. If I'm going to do like little faces, the uh, contrast colors are the way to go because, like I said, I, my hands shake a lot. So I don't have uh, a lot of steadiness when I'm getting down in there trying to do those really fine details in the contrast colors. Just fill them up nicely and take care of that for you. So. Maybe someday when I'm a when I'm a professional painter, I'll be able to Bob Ross these things and do like some of those guys that paint murals and fantasy stuff on the side of their Land Raiders. They look cool, but you know, I just can't do that. The guy from the Brush and Bolt Gun did a uh, uh, Primaris Legion of the Damned. And since those guys normally come with the flames and the bones and everything all sculpted onto the model, since there are no Primaris Legion of the Dams, he did it all by hand. He painted the, the skulls on the shoulder, the skull, the bones going down the arms and legs, the feet, the hands, fingers, toes, all that stuff. He painted all of that and then hand painted the flames and all that. Like I said. I am not near that level. And if you're going to do like competitions like Golden Demon and stuff, I would think you would have to be on that level in order to compete because I've seen what some of you guys out there in the world do for your, for your paint jobs and holy crap, some of it. You know, there's that guy, uh, Emir in, in Sweden, the uh, Squidmar. Squidmar Minis. That guy, that guy's pretty good, man. He's got some really great videos. He did a old school metal Thunderhawk. And it's like, man, that that's that's the unicorn, you know. That's the model that you get, and it sits on your shelf for, you know, in this case, 22 years <laughs> before. The guy was like, yeah, I, I can't build this. I got to let someone else have it. Sold for like $7,000 on eBay. You know, that's, uh, that's a hell of a model to, you know, have sitting there. I don't think uh, I could do with that. My pile of shame was pretty bad. I, I mean, I've got some stuff in there that's been there for a while, but, you know. Having something sit there for 20 years, especially something that epic, that's one of those things that you say, hey, I, I got to I gotta commission somebody to paint this. I couldn't do it. The uh, crafting part of this hobby is something that I can't do. I, I just don't have the patience or the tools and materials and resources to do it right away, and it's not something that you can get into slowly. Because you need quite a few pieces of this of stuff to, to to melt it, to cast it. You need to know how to work with resin, you know. Plus, I, I just don't want to burn the hell out of my hands on a fairly regular basis. So, like I said, that stuff's a little bit beyond what I'm going to be able to do ever. So, I'll focus uh, on what I can get here. Yeah, I'm noticing looking at the camera, too, that uh, unless people just want to sit here and listen to me blab while I hold something in my hand, I'm going to definitely need to change the camera angle before I do this again. I'll work on that today. I was going to go out, run around in the forest and see if I can catch some cool critters, but it's rainy and crappy outside and you know, I'm old. No sense in an old guy being out there in the in the woods, right? So this is what I'm going for. Just getting the metal pieces done. Uh, metal outlines. This These guys are, are a lot of fun. I think the most fun I've had painting on a model so far and the most intimidating model so far has been my Mortarian. Still not done with him. And since I started him when I first started painting, like 
I was that guy. <laughs> I was a, a retired army guy sitting out here in the middle of nowhere in Texas, wondering what to do with my time and effort. And uh, I was like, hey, I remember back in the army, I got some Warhammer models once, and I got a buddy that does that. Let me go snatch some of those up and try them out. So I went down to the local games workshop store and, you know, because I'm not a, a kid in there with $20, $30 trying to stretch it as far as it can go. I gave the guy like 400 bucks and said, I need a good army. And it was the time when uh, Dark Imperium had come out. So everything was, you know, brand new Plague Marines, Primaris and, you know, I caught it. I caught. I caught it right at the right time, I guess. And uh, I got a Dark Imperium box set. I got a Gilliman, a tri, a tr of the of the Imperium or the Primarch or some shit, something. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this all family friendly. Something and uh, a bottle Mortarian and. Uh, something else. I think I got uh, a, a box of orcs and a set of Eldar uh, jet bikes, speeder bikes. And that was what I walked out of there with the first time because I was like, no idea what I was supposed to be getting, what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't even know the rules, didn't own a codex. Just wanted to get some figures and paint them, right? So I got them home, did a horrible job on them, horrible, horrible job on them, but uh, learned a few lessons, learned a few tips. A um, couple years later, I have every box set that's come out since then. I just buy the box sets so I can get the unique pieces in them. I did not buy the uh, the latest one. What is it? The the Necrons and the Space Marines. I did not buy the big box set because I'm not a big Necron fan. And when I went into my GW shop, uh, my buddy AJ, that's the the owner there, he uh, he was telling me that you know, hey. You're not big on them. The best models to get are in the uh, elite box set. It's same box set pretty much, but just you know, a selection of the models. So I got the the coolest of the shield guards. The guy that's got the full saint skeleton in the front of a shield. I got that guy. Uh, got the three outriders and a couple necrons uh, for the. For the rest of the box, it really didn't. I, I just, I, I didn't like the way the the shield br br brothers, the blade guard brothers, the shield guys. I didn't like how their shields were, you know, so different. Like some of them just had a skull, some of them didn't have anything. You know, I'm I'm kind of of the opinion that, you know, less is more in that aspect. So sometimes you just don't need skulls on shields. And if you're going to have a guy standing there with, you know, a full saint skeleton on his shield, then the other guy should probably just have like normal shields. Because if you have relics on everybody's stuff, then what's the point of it being relic? And it's not special. It's just, you know, your standard add on that you can go get from the gun store and put on picking any rails and stick on your, your sidearm or your whatever you got. Right start making everything too modular and put it in steps where it's like, okay, this guy has a full skeleton, but this guy's got 80% skeleton. Well, this guy that'll stand next to him will have a 20% skeleton. And it's like one of those uh, evolution maps that you see of guys crawling out of the water, the whatever animal crawling out of the water and turning into whatever it is it's supposed to be. That's kind of the effect I get from it. But instead of a Cro-Magnon man or a Homer Simpson, you get a weird stages of when they built the the shield. It's like on day one we did this, and then we added a leg bone, and this is what we look like next to it. So, 
Yeah. One of those things. I just think that if you're going to have a relic, it needs to be a relic. It needs to be special. And if you just put the same thing around it, doesn't work for me. So, I saw a thing where guys were called it scalping. You know, and they'll buy like 10 box sets online or they'll go to a local game store and try to buy them all out. And then they'll take them to eBay and either break them down into parts and sell them or they'll try to cause a, uh, a shortage on them and get people to pay exorbitant prices. Like I remember the thing that actually kept me from getting the last box set with the Necrons was the games workshop decided to say, we're only going to put out a certain amount to see how they sell. And then they all sold. And as soon as they were all sold, you could see them on eBay for, I think, uh, I could have got one for 250 bucks here in Texas and I saw them on eBay for 450, 550 with multiple bids and lots of people watching. And it's like, yeah, I gotcha. Everybody's got to have a hustle, but you know, try to take advantage of people, and cause a shortage and cause, you know, issues like that. It just makes you not such a cool person. Some videos people are like, I'll speed this up, or how come you don't sit there and paint the whole thing? You, you could paint that whole chaos night and this song. I'm like, Yeah, I, I probably could, but you know, then it wouldn't be a hobby, it'd be a chore. And I'm a grown man, I don't do chores anymore. Yeah. I got a whole house full of kids down there that do the chores. That's their job. So, but I have been going for 42 minutes on this. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up and try to clip this at the 45 minute mark. That's another thing, Chris. Um, I got to try to set a timer or something that I could see so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And do this for longer than I should because I do have other stuff I need to take care of. Clean these up. And next time, what we will do is uh, these will be off over here. Next time, what we'll do is we'll get the raised portions of this uh, brushed get some more colors applied. Um, maybe I'll swing by the, uh, the local hobby shop and get some tufts of grass and stuff. Maybe some little sticks put in there. Got a bunch of nerglings here. Uh, to throw down. Let them run around. The guy's feet. But uh, we'll do the feet from here down we'll get all of those detailed out and painted so i can actually stick it down here and we can glue it to this once i get this part done and we could start doing the details on those uh, we'll also get the lead belcher parts on the upper carapace finished we'll get the gunmetal parts on the shoulders finished and maybe That'll leave us enough time to start figuring out what we're going to do with the weapons. I do want to do the right arm as a weapons claw, and I'm going to do the left arm as the Reaper chain sword. That's what the box art has. But I'm also kind of like, yeah, maybe I put the Reaper chain sword and the the big uh, cannon on this guy. So, all right. Well, we are. 44 and a half minutes in, and I want to thank you guys. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for helping me out with being my man there in the in the internet, telling me what I'm doing right and wrong. You're awesome, brother. Don't ever change. <laughs>